Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and it's time for a new card making challenge. Kendra's card challenge number 13. This is a quarterly card making challenge where you can create 15 cards using six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper. It's like a one sheet wonder times six. If you're not familiar with the one sheet wonder, it's a way to cut a sheet of paper efficiently so that you have no scraps and then you turn those pattern paper pieces into cards. Of course, you'll need other card stock and supplies, but for this challenge, you can create 15 A2 sized cards and have a chance to win a lot of prizes sharing your cards throughout the quarter. This challenge runs from January 1st through March 31st of 2024, and there are 21 company prize sponsors this quarter with over $1,000 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout the challenge. I'll share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge here in just a bit. To briefly sum up the challenge, you would pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color-coded papers A through F on the printable shown here, which are the cutting templates. This can be either six inch by six inch paper or 12 by 12 paper that's been cut down to six by six. And if you use double-sided paper, that's even better because you'll have more options in case you don't like two of the patterns together. You can just use the other side. Then you will cut the papers using the cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored card stock for the layers and card bases, and then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following the sketches. This challenge is a great way to use up those pattern paper pads and get a set of coordinating cards in the process. The first page of the printable shows the cutting guides for the first two sheets of pattern paper. The pink and purple are labeled as papers A and B, the second page shows the third and fourth sheets of pattern paper, which are green and teal, and they are labeled as papers C and D. And the third page shows the fifth and sixth sheets that are blue and orange, and they are labeled as papers E and F. All of the measurements are listed for each piece, and there are scissors on each cutting guide to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There's circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch that that piece goes with. There's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. For paper E here, all of the arrows are pointing the same way, so if you have any directional patterns that need to face a certain way, you'll want to assign it to paper E. All of the rest of the papers have arrows pointing in different directions, so you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. If you want to use a directional pattern, you may have to rotate the card sketch to have it face the right way. Some of the arrows are at a diagonal, so it's best to use non-directional patterns on these. Here are the card sketches. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge, and this page shows the first six, and then the next page shows sketches 7 through 12, and then sketches 13 through 15. Since everything is color-coded, it makes it easy to see what goes where, but everything that is gray, black, or white, you can use white or colored cardstock, or even additional sheets of pattern paper if you'd like. For the sketches that don't have very many pieces of pattern paper, you can always use things like embossed panels, vellum, or stenciled panels to give it more detail. Now, card sketch one shows a large pattern paper piece for paper A, along with quarter inch strips around a diamond shape in the center. This is a faux shutter card or fractured card. Sketch 2 also has a diamond shape from paper C on top of a textured rectangle panel. You can use a word die or large sentiment on top. Sketch 3 calls for two small pieces from paper A made to look like it goes all the way across the card, but it's covered by a large 4 inch square. And you can use paper A or paper E for the banner piece at the top right hand corner. Sketch 5 has three squares, one large from paper B, a smaller square from paper C, and then another for the sentiment or image. Sketches five and six are just alike using paper C and D together, but one is landscape and the other is portrait. Then on the next page, sketch seven is one of four sketches by Alicia with Call Me Crafty Owl. This quarter we are doing a collaboration with Sheetload of Cards. Sketch seven and sketches 10 through 12 are all sketches from Crafty Owl's monthly sheet load of cards printables. If you're not familiar with Alicia's sheet load of cards, I will have her YouTube channel linked below so you can check that out. But sketch seven is from her November of 2021 sheet load of cards and it uses two pieces from paper A. 
a panel from paper E plus a piece from paper F that overlaps the A pieces. Sketch 8 uses papers A and E where you can build a seam in the white area. And Sketch 9 calls for a strip from paper C along with short quarter inch strips from papers D, F, and also coordinating cardstock at a diagonal on that second strip. And then Sketch 10 is from February of 2023 sheet load and it uses papers B and F. Sketch 11 is from July of 2019 and it uses papers D and F. And Sketch 12 is from the November of 2020 sheet load and uses papers B, D, and F. Now Crafty Owl has given me permission to use these sketches in this month's quarterly challenge. This page on the printable includes a QR code that you can scan with the camera on your phone which will take you directly to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group page where you can join and post your photo of all 15 cards to enter the challenge. And I'll talk more about this how to enter in just a bit. And the next sheet shows the last three sketches numbers 13 through 15. Sketch 13 uses strips from paper E with a large partial circle on top. For card sketch 14, it uses half inch strips from papers B and D with a scallop circle. And finally, for sketch 15, there's a large rectangle piece from paper B and smaller strips at a diagonal from papers B, D, and F. The bottom part of this page includes instructions with some helpful hints like using larger mats or layers to cut out smaller mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper to save on supplies. You can also rotate or flip the card sketches to make it work with your theme. You can adjust the size of the sentiments to meet your needs and even add extra details and embellishments if you'd like. You don't have to follow the sketches exactly. They're just meant to be a starting point to help you get your creative juices flowing. If you don't like some of the patterns together, maybe because they clash or the colors don't match well, you don't have to use them. Swap it out for another pattern or even use solid colored cardstock. Remember, this is meant to be fun, not stressful. Use whatever you think looks good. I don't have a lot of rules, but you do need to make a full set of 15 cards to enter for prizes. If you have scraps instead of cutting six pattern papers and you want to use them to make a full set of cards, that's totally fine. The last paragraph explains how to enter the challenge to be eligible to win prizes. And then this last page has a quick reference guide, which is a chart to show what papers will need to be matched with others for each of the card sketches. This will help when choosing your papers so you'll know what needs to coordinate. This sheet also lists all of the awesome company prize sponsors with links to their websites. If you have the PDF file pulled up on your computer or your phone, the links will take you directly to their websites. Some of these are affiliate links. So if you make a purchase, this helps to support what I do. If you're not familiar with some of these companies, I hope you'll check them out and see what all they have to offer. For a complete list of prizes you can win, visit KendrasCardChallenges.com. Over on the right, it shows my Patreon membership program and outlines all of the benefits that you can receive if you join as a paid patron. Now for this quarter, in order to download the free printable, you will need to join as a free member. But if you'd like to receive extra perks and benefits, you can join as a paid member. I put in a lot of work to create these challenges each quarter. So joining as a paid patron is another way to help support what I offer the crafty community. Patrons basically help to keep the challenges free each quarter. So starting at just $5 a month, you can receive access to a printer-friendly version of the challenge, access to a year's worth of archived previous challenges, and access to bonus printables. For $10, as an all-access patron, you can receive everything I've already mentioned, plus early access to new card challenges, access to all previous card challenges, and a card-making kit sampler. And then for $25 a month, VIP patrons receive additional benefits on top of what has already been mentioned. And these include a handmade card from me, a monthly card making kit, and a crafty live stream session each quarter. There are also monthly prize drawings and an exclusive Facebook group for all access and VIP patrons, where you'll find resources for the bonus printables, access to group chats, and events. For more information about my Patreon, you can scan the QR code on the printable or visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's Card Challenges. I'll also have this linked in the description box below. Now I'll show you how to cut the papers using these cutting templates. But before I do, I'll show you the papers that I've selected for a set of cards that I'll be sharing with you in a future video here soon on my channel. I'm using the Bookworm Paper Pad from Pink and Main. 
This is from the December of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit. And these are the six sheets that I've assigned to each of the cutting templates. I'll be using both sides of these papers for my cards. Now before you get started, you'll want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them to help keep you organized. I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work. So the first thing you'll do is look for the scissors on the cutting template. This indicates where you'll cut first. I'm going to start with this green plaid piece here for paper A. It says to make the first cut at five and a quarter inches. And then this small piece, I'm going to turn it and cut at five inches. And this piece is for card eight and the small piece is for card three. And that will eventually be cut into a banner. And now I've got this five and a quarter inch by six inch piece. So I'm going to turn it along the six inch side and I'm going to cut at four inches. And this is this panel will be for card number one. And then I'll take this bottom strip and cut at two inches to make a square. And then I'm going to slide this over and cut at one inch. And then I'm going to turn this last piece and cut it in half at one inch. And these two pieces are also for card three and the square and one inch pieces are for card number seven. Now that I have all of my pieces cut for paper A, I'm going to sort them into the numbered cellophane bags to keep myself organized. I'll speed this up just a bit. Okay, so now for cutting paper B, I'm looking at the arrows because if I want my stripes to be facing a certain way on a particular card, I need to pay attention to which way I turn it to make my first cut. A lot of these arrows are at an angle, so that means they're gonna be diagonal on the card, and the scissors are on the right-hand side, and it says to cut at three and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna make my first cut at three and a quarter inches. And then you'll turn this top piece and cut at three and a quarter inches to make the square. And then you'll cut at two and a quarter inches and you're left with a half inch piece. This rectangle piece is for card 15 and the strip is for card 14. And now for the bottom part, I'm cutting at four inches. And then I'll turn this piece and cut at two and a quarter inches, leaving a half inch piece also for card 14. And then with this last piece, I'm gonna cut off a quarter inch off of the end so that I'll have a one and three quarter inch by two and three quarter inch piece. And this will be for card 12. And because of the pattern on this small strip, I'll definitely have to use the other side of the paper for card 15. And I'll go ahead and place these in the numbered bags according to the cutting guides for each of the pieces. For paper C, my first cut is going to be at five inches. And then I'll turn the small piece and I'll cut it at five and a half. And these pieces are for cards nine and two. And this piece for card two will be cut into a banner. Then you'll turn the large piece so that the six inch side is across the top and then cut at two and a half inches. And then turn and cut at two and a half inches again. So then you should have a two and a half inch or actually two, two and a half inch squares. And then for this big piece that's left, I'm going to save and cut the diagonal pieces at the same time as I cut paper D. But first I need to cut off this quarter inch piece so that it measures four and three quarter inches by three and a half inches. And that strip is an alternative piece that you can use for either sketch nine or 15. So I'm going to set these aside and go ahead and cut paper D. So the first cut is at two inches. Then you'll turn and cut the half inch off of the bottom. And then you'll cut this strip into two one inch pieces. And these are both for sketch 11. Then you have the big piece on the right. So you want to cut the one and a quarter inch strip off of the bottom first. So I'm going to measure at four and three quarter inches and cut. So before I set this piece aside to cut with paper C. I need to cut a half inch off for card 14. 
So the piece that's left over should measure three and a half by four and three quarter inches. Same as the one for paper C. Now let's cut this bottom piece. So you'll cut at two and three quarter inches first. And then you'll turn this piece and cut at one and one eighths of an inch. So that leaves you with a really skinny one eighth inch strip. And that'll be for card 15. And because this is so skinny, you probably want to choose a smaller pattern for this particular sheet. But the two and three quarter inch piece is for card 12. And then this one and a quarter inch square needs to be cut into five quarter inch strips. And all of these pieces are for card number nine. Now for the two panels that I saved from paper C and D to be cut at the same time. These basically need to be cut at a diagonal from corner to corner. And so I'm lining these up behind one another and I'll be lining up the top left corner in my cut line with the bottom right corner also in the cut line. And I'm going to cut this at a diagonal. Now, if you have a paper trimmer like mine, you can use the wire to help make sure that you've lined it up correctly, but you could also use a guillotine trimmer. Just make sure that you have those corners lined up really well and it looks like I didn't press my blade down far enough to cut through both pieces. But then once you have these cut, you'll put them back together and you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to um, cut from the bottom or the top right down to the bottom left. So here I'm just trying to press them back together so that I can make sure that I, I cut them evenly, lining up the top right corner and the bottom left corner in that cut line. And I'm trying to keep them lined up, but you want to make sure that you press down on the plastic piece really well to keep it in place. Otherwise you may have it shift like it did for me here, <laughs> but luckily it didn't cut it too far off. I was able to adjust it and finish cutting. Now, if you take a look at the sketches, there are some really skinny lines where the pieces meet. So to cover up the slightly flawed edges, I'll use some skinny sticker strips, or you could even use some strips of cardstock to make that X to cover up the seams. But I just used my scissors to cut off the piece with the frayed edge. It wasn't too much, not that big of a deal. Again, if you mess up, you can cover it up with some something. <laughs> But once you have all of these pieces cut, you can interchange them. So with me using double-sided paper, if I you know, don't like the patterns together, I can flip one over or both over. So here I'm just trying out the different patterns that I have. These are both of the uh, herringbone patterns. I've got them confused now. Kind of like that. And here I'm trying out the stripes, but um, whatever you think looks the best, I'm going to probably stick with the, uh, the herringbone side. That's, that's too busy. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, this will be in an upcoming video. So I'm only showing the cutting process for these papers in this video. I will share a uh, set of cards that I made using these sketches here in just a bit when I'm done showing you how to cut all the papers, but, um, these will be for cards five and six. For paper E, the first cut is going to be at four inches, and then you'll turn this piece and cut at five and a quarter inches, and this will be for card seven. And then the strip, you'll cut at three inches, and this is for card eight. And the smaller piece is an alternative piece for card three. You can either use the same pattern paper A or change it up with paper E. And then for the strip on the right, you'll cut at five inches, and both of these pieces will be for card 13. And then for the last paper, F, your first cut is at two inches. Again, look at your pattern to make sure that it's facing the way you want before you make your first cut. And after cutting at two inches, you'll turn this piece and cut at three inches. And that top piece is for card seven. Now this bottom piece gets a little trickier with the eight inch pieces or eighth of an inch pieces. You'll measure at one and three eighths, which is an eighth of an inch smaller than one and a half. And that piece is for card 12. 
and then with the strip that's left you'll measure at a quarter of an inch and then you will slide it over and cut it again at a quarter of an inch and this will leave an eighth of an inch strip and then you're going to take one of the quarter inch strips and you're going to cut it at one and a quarter inch twice so you're going to cut it at one and a quarter slide it over and cut it again at one and a quarter and then you'll want to save that really small piece and that'll be for the top corner of one of the strips for card nine it'll make sense when you go to put it together but the other two strips are for card 15. and then for the piece that's left you'll want to turn it so that the six inch side is across the top and you'll cut at three and a half inches and then you'll turn that top piece and you'll cut four one inch strips and these will all be for card 10. And then for the bottom piece, you'll measure at one and a quarter inches. And that'll be your last cut. And these two pieces will be for card 11. Once you have all of your papers cut and sorted by sketch number, you'll want to cut the layers according to the measurements that are shown on the card sketches using coordinating cardstock that matches your pattern papers. All of the panels and layers on the sketches are either gray, black, or white, and the measurements of each are shown, along with some other suggestions on some of the sketches on how to make the card a little more interesting. This could be by adding an embossed panel, a stenciled background, or even using additional pattern paper. Or you can just keep it clean and simple. But next, you'll want to decide how you want to decorate the cards, whether you use stamps, dies, or ephemera. It's up to you. You'll add ribbon or fun embellishments. Just get creative and add your own personal touch. But use the sketches to cut all of your layers and decide how you want to decorate them. I'll be sharing the process of how to make all of these cards here on my YouTube channel soon. So make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my new uploads. And make sure you check out the giveaway video hop that begins January 2nd, where each of the Kendra's Card Challenge's video team members will be showing the card making process for each of the cards. Now I'll show you the first set of cards I made while creating this challenge. I used some of the past Crafty Courtyard kits to create these. And while I show you the cards, I'll provide a little more details about entering the challenge. You can visit my website, kendrascardchallenges.com, to get all of the details about the challenge. But you'll want to join the Facebook group called Kendra's Card Challenges. You'll have to agree to some group rules before you'll be approved to join. But you can also find the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. But in this group is where you will upload one photo of all 15 cards to the official entry photo album for the month that you're submitting it for. Again, your photo should contain all 15 cards and there are different photo albums for each month during the quarter and you'll need to include your name state and country of residence in the caption for the photo this is required for prize awarding purposes most of the prizes can be won by card makers worldwide but there are some physical products that need to be shipped so i need to know which country you reside in the featured post at the top of the group you'll find instructions on how to locate and post to the photo albums using both a computer and a mobile device it's important that you post in the photo albums so that I can locate your entry. Just posting your photo on the group wall does not count as an entry, but there are also separate photo albums for each card sketch where you can share a photo of each card individually. Uploading individual card photos isn't a requirement to be entered to win one of the quarterly prizes, but this is how you enter to win one of the monthly sketch prizes. Plus, everyone can see the cards up close a little better. What's great about the individual albums is that you can post the pictures as you finish them throughout the quarter and still be eligible to win the sketch prizes, even if you don't get to finish all 15 cards. You can officially enter the challenge up to three times, but only once per month throughout the quarter. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. If you're not on Facebook, you can upload your photo using the form linked on my website to officially enter the challenge. But please note that these entries will not be included in the monthly video showcase. If you post your creations on social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, you can use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 13 and KCC 13, 
Others can see your creations and be inspired, so I hope you'll share your cards with us. By using these hashtags, this allows everyone to search for cards made with the challenge. So if you're looking for more examples or inspiration, this is a great resource. As already mentioned, there will be a big giveaway video hop on January 2nd where each of the video design team members will be sharing the card making process for each of the 15 sketches in this challenge and you'll have a chance to win a goodie bag filled with card making supplies valued at over $100. I hope you'll hop along with us to get some wonderful ideas and tips for challenge 13 and have a chance to win. In addition, the inspiration team will be sharing projects on Instagram and other social media to show how these sketches can be used beyond the challenge in everyday card making, such as scrapbooking, tags, home decor, and more. They will be posting on a variety of social media platforms throughout the quarter, so I hope you'll click on the link to my creative team member page. This is in the description box below. On this page, you'll find a list of all the team members' links. I hope you'll follow them to find additional card making inspiration. Now let's talk about the amazing prizes you can win for entering Kendra's Card Challenge 13. As mentioned before, we have 21 company prize sponsors this quarter with prizes valued at more than $1,000. The sponsors for this challenge are shown here, along with the prizes you can win for each one. Some prizes are monthly and some prizes are quarterly. So to have more chances to win, submit a set of cards each month. Not only can you win prizes, but you'll be building up your card stash in the process. There are also some additional prizes you can win, such as mystery card kits, stamps, and dies. Lots of card making supplies. Additionally, winners will be chosen each month for each of the sketches. The sketch winners will receive a handmade card from me and access to one of my do digital downloads. You can see the full list of prizes and what each company has donated on my website as well. I don't know about you guys, but I love making cards, but it makes it even better to have a chance to win prizes. We will be having hops nearly each week throughout the quarter where you can have even more chances to win prizes. These hops will showcase creations made with products from some of the Kendra's Card Challenge's prize sponsors and the card sketches from this challenge. And we'll have some guest designers joining in as well. The first Instagram hop will be on January 5th. These opportunities will be posted in the Kendra's Card Challenge's Facebook group. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you join and turn on notifications within the group on Facebook. Remember, you have until March 31st of 2024 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the form on my website. If you're watching this video after March 31st, you can download the archived printables through my Patreon page as a patron member. Now I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Kendra's Card Challenges patrons shown here. You don't know how much I appreciate your support. And I hope you enjoy the new benefits that you'll receive as a patron going forward for 2024. If you think you might give this challenge a try, leave me a comment. If you're new to my channel, let me know how you found this video or heard about my challenge. I'd also love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who you think might enjoy it. I hope you will join us on challenge number 13. I really appreciate you watching this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.